Hey everybody, it's Becky. Since Thanksgiving is a little over a month away, I wanted to share the Thanksgiving unit study that we're doing with my sixth grader and my kindergartner. If you watch my homeschooling haul, um, and I'll link it below, I showed these books. I actually have a couple of these. They're the, like, the If You series from Scholastic, and this one is obviously If You Sailed on the Mayflower in 1620. So I got these primarily for my kindergartner, but then after I was looking through them, there's some information that really a lot of adults could stand to maybe have a refresher on or things that you really didn't even know at all. And like I mentioned in that haul video, they've been, they got really great reviews and they've been talked about how people use them in upper levels of public school as well as for adults that want to study for their American citizenship test or anything like that. So they're really actually really good books even though they originally were for my kindergartner. So my oldest daughter was in public school up until fourth grade. And so she's heard about the pilgrims from school and just from talking to us and things like that. So she knows the story of Thanksgiving and pilgrims and all that. But like I said, it's a really good book for review. And then there's there's likely to be some things in here that she really didn't know either. And I'm sorry about the glare. I'm in my kitchen. It's nighttime and that light is shining over the head. But anyway, so I want to show you what we're going to do. It's a four-week study and I wanted to get this video out early enough. So if you decided to kind of purchase the book for yourself or look for it in the library that you would be able to have time to do that before Thanksgiving. And our library did have a couple of these books. It didn't have this one in particular. And they're kind of stingy with how long they let you keep things sometimes. And so I really wanted to make sure that I had it, you know, to, to take our time with. So that's why I went ahead and purchased it. It's only like five or six dollars per book and it's a really good resource to have you know in your bookshelves um, you know for the long term anyway so I went ahead and purchased it. There was a couple of worksheets I found online of people that had made unit studies and things related to this book but I went ahead and kind of made my own. This will take place of each girl's history lessons um, lead for the four weeks leading up to Thanksgiving. So if you have seen these books before they are in question and answer format so there's quite a few questions that are going to be talked or answered and talked about. So I wanted to break it up into bite-sized chunks, but not make it so, like, obviously, there's a lot of questions here. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I broke it up into, that we had enough content to cover each week, but then not, not too much. So I went through the book and kind of looked and saw what the questions were. And of course, each set of questions are grouped by category. So there's a Pilgrim's category, a Mayflower, a Plymouth, a New World, and the First Thanksgiving. Those are the categories, each chapter, that these questions are answered in. So I went by and basically... Some chapters were really short, like this one about the pilgrims, it's just like four pages long. So I went ahead and combined in week one the first chapter and then started the second chapter. So I have everything broken down. So week one, I've got the pages that we're going to read and then the craft we're going to do. And so I, sh I took, um, since obviously we haven't done this ourselves yet either, I went ahead and sh you know, printed out pictures of what the crafts are going to look like. So those are just a simple little paper plate. Uh, pilgrim craft and my oldest daughter doesn't have to do this if she doesn't want to but she can if she wants to and I just got these paper plates at the Dollar Tree to use with that and so that's the first day day two again I had the pages we're going to read and talk about and answer the questions that were talked about in the reading and then the craft is going to be for each girl to draw their own Mayflower now my oldest daughter might not definitely won't need this necessarily step by step but it's a good guideline for my kindergartner, and then my oldest daughter can either follow this or she can choose to draw it on her own. But I just printed that out so they would have kind of a guideline. And then we're going to use, once it's finished, we're going to use the three sales to label some information that was talked about in the reading. So such as how many people sailed the Mayflower, how many days they were at sea, and then maybe a list of some things that they would take with them if they were going to be sailing on the Mayflower to the New World. I also failed to mention, most of this is done on a two-day-a-week uh, schedule this week I went ahead and did Monday Tuesday and Thursday just because I was you know the, the first chapter was so short and then I was combining um, trying to finish up the next chapter in a week so for this week we do have three days to do it and there's a Mayflower video Scholastic was a really great resource and I've got all the links down below for everything there's a, a, a webcast that you can go to on the Scholastic website that there's all kinds of information that's put on by the Plymouth I think it's called the Plymouth um, foundation and so there are historians that talk all about the pilgrims and the Plymouth settlement and all that stuff and so there's there there quite a few videos on that website that you could watch kind of like a virtual field trip and so the first one we're going to watch was just about the Mayflower and that's 20 minutes long and so then for that day we are going to make our own Mayflower craft and it'll look kind of like this so again using the paper plates it's just really simple and like I said my my sixth grader might choose not to do this and that's perfectly fine 
Uh, she might want to just to get her out of some of her other work, I don't know. But that is going to be on day three of week one. And that finishes up the Pilgrim's chapter and the Mayflower chapter. Moving on to week two, it's all about the new world. So this is uh, on two days this, this week. On Tuesday, I have the pages we're going to read and then again talking about the different heading questions. So like what did Pilgrims, what was life like when they got off the boat? What was the Mayflower Compact and all that stuff. And then the, the craft for this one in this chapter, it talks about how that they took a lot of the Indian corn from the Indians. And so for the craft, for that one, we just have this little template and they can cut it out. And I found this really pretty fall um, kind of Indian corn inspired glitter and then sequins. So they can use the glitter, they can use a combination of both or either or. So I got two packets of those from the Dollar Tree. I thought that was really pretty just to kind of make their own Indian corn. So that's the craft for day one. Day two is uh, reading the pages, talking about the different questions that we learned about, and then back to that Scholastic virtual field trip, there's a video about the Wampanoag home site. So we have a craft where we're going to make an Indian, Native American inspired canoe. And so I found the, the instructions for that online as well. You just use brown construction paper and it shows you kind of how to fold it and uh, they can decorate the sides or whatever they want to with that. But I thought that was really neat and something fun to do for that activity. Week three has probably the most work of anything and it is, um, again, back to three days this week. So it's all about the new world. So on Monday, we're reading the pages and talking about the questions. We're gonna watch the virtual field trip about the Pilgrim Village. And then, so the craft is going to be not only um, we're gonna make a craft, but we're gonna look at the Wampanoag too, their homes and how they were built. And I found this online and I've got links for this below as well. But then going, going from kind of what the Wampanoag lived in into the Pilgrim houses. And so there's a little bit of reading about that and showing how they made their roofs and things like that. And then um, we have just kind of a picture of what it's gonna look like. Now I wanna emphasize to them that they said that pilgrims did not live in log cabins. So even though we're gonna be using popsicle sticks that I got at the Dollar Tree, I might even trim off the rounded part just so it doesn't look like a log cabin because they were wood, like long wood pieces, but they were not a log cabin. So we're gonna be making that and then we'll probably use, I have some cardboard and we can probably tear off the first layer and kind of make this little thatch corrugated kind of a look to it for the roof. And so that's the first the craft for the first day. Second day, again, some reading, question answering, and then we're going to be watching a different video that is from the same people that put on, it's Rankin Bass that used to put on a lot of those really classic Christmas shows that would come on TV. They made one called The Mouse on the Mayflower, and it's 45 minutes, so they're probably going to watch that and not have a craft on day two just because that is such a long video. And then day three, getting into the first Thanksgiving, we have more reading. My youngest will be doing... Um, this that I found, it's called the First Thanksgiving Book, but instead of doing it in a book style, I'm thinking about maybe having her cut them out and do them kind of in, in a timeline fashion so she can really get a grasp on when things happen in the order that they happen. But I have this for her. I didn't print this out for my oldest because I really did think it was probably too young for her. If she wants, I can print her one out. But it's just a couple pages kind of showing what happened and then she can color it and we'll, we'll either put it in a book or do it in a timeline. I'm not really sure yet. And then we have another craft which we can do that day or maybe if they want to do it on Friday they can. It's a Thanksgiving bracelet and when I saw it online it was done with pony beads and it tells the story of the pilgrims all the way from the beginning of coming across on the Mayflower all the way to the harvest and everything. It tells it in a like you make beaded bracelets. Each color of the bead represents a different part of the story and it, it suggests pony beads but I could not find any multi-packs that had all the colors that were needed and if I was going to purchase them individually it was going to cost a lot more than I thought it was necessary to spend. I do have these parlor beads and I realize this is not something they're going to want to wear out you know every day so it doesn't really matter. It's just to kind of help reinforce the story and the timeline but um, you know it talks about the gray bead so I have the, the beads for everything for each girl has enough in here for each of them to make one bracelet and we can string it on some yarn and just kind of just to show them they can make a bookmark out of it if they'd prefer instead of a bracelet. So I like the idea, I just didn't want to spend the money on the pony beads, so these are going to work just fine. If you have those little perler beads, those would probably work. So that is week three. 
And week four is pretty simple and mostly fun because it is the week of Thanksgiving. So we're going to watch a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, which I found. I know my mom and dad, I think, have the DVD, but we don't. So I found it on YouTube. It's 25 minutes. And I found a cute little snack that might be fun to eat while they're watching it, and it's pumpkin patch pudding. So basically, it's pudding with chopped up Oreos and then those little candy pumpkins and the little signs. I thought that was really cute, and I might make that for them to have while they watch the show. And then a couple crafts. We have one thing I want to do for sure is the Magic Treehouse Thankful Quilt, which I didn't mention yet. We're going to read um, the Thanksgiving on Thursday Magic Treehouse book. I'll, again, my oldest daughter has read these before, and they're way, way, way below her reading level. I'm going to read it aloud, so if she happens to be in the room and wants to hear her, that's, that's great. She doesn't have to listen. They also have a, a fact tracker book that goes along with it that's nonfiction that is, you know, based on the story of Thanksgiving. So it's got pilgrims, information, and pictures, and different little maps and things. So we can kind of delve a little bit deeper into a study of pilgrims and read this along with the actual chapter book. So I was excited to find that at the library, but it does recommend if you go to the Magic Treehouse website, they have activities that go along with a lot of their books. And this is one of the activities, and it's a thankful quilt. And so it says, when Jack and Annie return from their adventure among the pilgrims, and the Wampanoag, they realized just how much they had to be thankful for in their own lives and time. Decorate the Thanksgiving quilt below, filling in each blank square with words or a picture showing something you were thankful for. I thought that was a really cute idea, whether you read that chapter book or not. And then I can put this on some colored paper and laminate it. And I thought it would make a really cute keepsake that we want to, you know, hang on to because it's going to be really neat to see. And it's really funny, too, because my grandmother... They, she's 98, and for her 98th birthday, all the daughters and grandkids and great-grandkids and friends and stuff made a quilt square for her uh, of something that was a memory related to her, and we had it put into a big quilt, and she keeps it on her bed. And so when we were at her house for her birthday, my girls were just so fascinated by her quilt and all the different quilt squares and seeing what each one meant and who it was from. So that was really fun for them. So I think this is going to be a really great activity they're really going to be interested in. I even thought about once I color it and laminate it like maybe cutting a little hole right here and making some yarn so it looks like it's got like some yarn coming off the corners I don't know I just thought that was really cute and that's free and I'll, I've got the the, um, the link for that below as well the other craft I just thought was really cute and it might be stupid I don't know I just thought it was an, a neat way to use things that are free or we already have um, this is just paint paint chips and we have those laying around all over the place but you put them attach them to a brown piece of cardboard with a brad and then the kids can write something they're thankful for and draw a picture if they want. They don't have to. But I already have all this stuff, and I'm trying to, you know, I was just trying to do it with mostly things that I already had on hand. And I just thought it was cute, a cute way to do it, a little turkey, instead of something that they've done a million times over. And something small that's going to store well when we're done with Thanksgiving. I don't have this big giant thing I want to keep that's too big to keep, if that makes sense. So I thought that was kind of cute. So I do have the links for everything all below. I hope I'm not talking too fast. I'm just trying not to bore you guys. Um, but I thought it was really cute. I'm really excited about it. And like I mentioned, I think in one of my other videos before, this homeschool year, I'm trying to do a lot more things with them together. And so there are some things that might be a little too easy for my sixth grader, and that's okay. She can choose not to do them, but she definitely needs to at least listen to the reading, you know, and watch the videos and things. But as far as the crafts, she doesn't have to do those. But I just think it's a fun way to celebrate Thanksgiving, to hear a story that maybe we've heard a million times before, but maybe learn some new information along the way, and just to be together and celebrate Thanksgiving. So um, links for everything is uh, down below that I could find. I don't think I could find the links for these, but you could see by looking or probably find something on Pinterest. If you like this video, if you like it, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of my homeschooling videos or any of the other videos that I put up each week. I will see you guys soon. Bye.